Next generation. Next generation. So what do you want to talk about today, Meredith? Thanks for asking. These are two 4x8 solar air heater panels that we installed this past week. They only took a few days of work and cost for total under $400. Uh, they're covered in greenhouse Lexan glass and they do a good job. So what do they do exactly? Well, they have, there are two fans total, one for each unit, and it's being controlled by the Okapi 2.i system. That means that if one solar air heater is in a bit of shade, this fan in here is going to be running a bit slower. And this fan is going to be running as fast as it can, I'm sure. It's in full sun. And uh, what, what is in the frame? What is the construction other than the Lexan? The basic construction is polycyanurate foam board that is in the back and on the sides to keep in as much potential heat as possible. Uh, and then we have wooden framing. And the, the heat generating part of it, the black that you see in there, it's two layers of fiberglass screen. <laughs> are covered in two uh, panels of greenhouse Lexan glass. This is great stuff that you can put a screw right through it and it won't crack. It also has great insulating value. That's and the stuff crush helmets are made from, right? I think so. So pretty, yeah, it can take a lot of, a lot of damage. Very durable. Yeah. And unlike uh, simple uh, plexiglass, it won't crack or screw when you put a screw into it. And uh, it does stand up to a lot of heat. It lets in as much light as possible. Very good. I like the trim, by the way. Is that going to turn grey and match the, uh, the workshop? It should. It's a nice hemlock trim. And it'll turn grey just like this stuff after a few years. Okay. Can you talk a bit more about how the Okapi works? I see that one panel is in shade. Does that affect the performance of the unit? Or Absolutely. What that's why the Akapi system is so great for any solar air heater. At some point in the day, no matter how beautiful the day is, you're going to have a little bit of sun that is not, a little bit of shade on some of your panels. Um, or you're going to have a bit of a cloud passing by or whatever may be going on. Uh, you see this panel here is partially obstructed by the leaves over there. In another hour, it'll be completely in full sun. But for this moment, this fan operating this panel is going to be running at a lower speed because of the temperature inside being a net lower temperature level than this one. This one should be running at full speed and that's the advantage of the Akapi 2.i system in that it can control two independent fans. And do you have to put many holes in the wall? Yes, there are four total vent holes made into the wall and that was done with a four inch hole saw. So just like installing a, a vent for a dryer? Pretty just much. the same, okay. Very good. Any wires or anything there? I can't see anything. No, the wires are all internal. These wires you see here have nothing to do with this unit. And uh, the temperature sensors were installed internally, but the wires are embedded in behind the system, so you do not see them. So it's nice and tidy. Very tidy. Yeah, they look pretty good. Thank you, Meredith. Thank you. Bye. We're going to go inside and check out the inside and see how the temperatures are doing. What are we going to do next? We're going to go inside and check out how the temperatures are doing. Let's do that. Okay, so we're inside the, uh, the workshop now, and you can see we, we haven't actually uh, covered the inlet holes with uh, vent caps or anything yet, so we can show you what we've done. We have a four inch uh, standard dry vent installed in the wall, which runs directly into the heater. If you look closely, you can see the convection sensors at the top of each of the units. And we've actually cut um, five inch square pieces of foam board and put a four inch hole in there, and that nicely slots around the vent pipe and uh, keeps it well insulated. So what we're seeing here is the, uh, the solar collector is running and it's drawing in the air from the ceiling which will be reconvected air which we're going to transfer all the way through the unit, heat even further and blow out on the floor level and hopefully that will warm the floor and the furniture and everything else in the building. Okay, and here we are uh, showing the unit outlets. So we have two variable speed fans embedded in the wall. Again, we don't have the vent caps on just to show you exactly what we're doing. The fans have five inch square pieces of foam board um, which goes actually quite far back into the wall and that's, that encapsulates the four inch vent pipe and gives it a good seal on the wall. The uh, fans like this are variable speed. These fans are 103 CFM. This is the Okapi unit as it currently is. It's an Okapi 2.0 unit. It has two connecting wires. Again, I'm just showing you this. You can hide these in the wall if you like. I'm pinning them against the wall, but I just wanted to lay everything out so you can see exactly what uh, the Okapi is comprised of. 
the Epi box there has the microcontroller. It's basically monitoring all the temperature sensors and the room temperature. Um, it's also monitoring weather trends, including shadows passing over the, the solar collectors, to fully optimize the speed of the fan at any one given moment. And uh, we, we've got quite a fair bit of heat over here. We have the uh, data logging unit here as well. Um, at some stage, I'm probably going to put the data logger inside the Okapi unit, but we just want to keep the, the uh, costs down at the moment so that that is currently available with the production model of Okapi. And uh, I'm going to check out the data logger and see exactly what temperatures we, we have coming out at the moment. Okay, so the uh, Okapi unit is connected to a personal computer here, and uh, it's basically sending out a lot of information. Um, information includes the current fan speeds, the uh, temperatures up at the ceiling, the ambient temperature, uh, how long the unit's been active, the temperatures at uh, the outlets, which again are at the bottom there, and it's giving me a bit more information, like technical information, which, uh, which is probably more important to me than anybody else, but let's not go into that for the moment, just to keep things more simple. The, um, the, both of those collectors have been in the sun for just over half an hour, so they're still, they're still warming up, and uh, it's still fall here, so we have quite a few leaves on the trees, and there's a little bit of shade being cast on the boxes outside. However, what I'm seeing at the moment, um, the fan on the right is running at about three, just over three-fifths of its full speed, and that fan is currently outputting 117 degrees Fahrenheit, and that's building up quite nicely. It's, it's lifting up about one Fahrenheit every 30 seconds a minute or so. The fan on the left is running at slightly under three fifths of its maximum speed, and that fan is outputting just over 102, 104 Fahrenheit right now. So we'll watch that for a little longer and uh, see what the temperatures build up to. We've unplugged the power adapter, and now we're connected to this 12 volt battery, which is charged by a solar pack. When it's running like this, it's essentially free running cost. That means free heat. We quite enjoy this, and I'm really enjoying this heat coming out of this. It's about 117, 118 degrees Fahrenheit. 122. That's hot. Ooh, 120 now. That's getting hotter and hotter. These solar panels really are working, and we're going to just sit here a little while longer and enjoy it. a meat thermometer up to the fan here just so you can get a visual of the actual temperature. We have an internal temperature sensor on all of our outlets and inlets and the temperature for this outlet is giving us on our computer over there a data logging of 120 and up Fahrenheit as well. So it is it's definitely working and it feels great. What's that in Celsius? And in Celsius that is 52 degrees Celsius. That's, that's significant. Next generation. Next generation.